For those of you that have paid attention to the Elmont roadmap on the Panasonic website, you'll note there's a wide to telephoto zoom that's meant to be announced some point soon. And well, now it has been. So today we're gonna to be talking about the brand new 28 to 200 F4 to F7.1 OIS macro lens, or as I lovingly call it, the 28 to 200. And this lens is honestly one of my favorite lenses that I've ever had the pleasure of testing. Um, and we'll get into my reasons why in this video, but let's just jump straight into it and talk about price point. So this brand new lens, the 20 200, will set you back 899 pounds if you live in the UK or 999 euros if you are somewhere in Europe. And I'll also put the dollar amount somewhere on screen now. And for the price point, I genuinely think that this lens is worth its weight in gold. It is definitely worth that price because because honestly, this is hands down one of the most versatile lenses that I've ever used. This lens weighs around 413 grams and is roughly the same size as a 20 to 60 kit lens, if you're familiar with the sizing of that one. Um, but to be honest, it's also very similar in size to the 1.8 primes too. Um, that means that it's literally the world's smallest and lightest long zoom lens on the market as of February, 2024. And since it shares a similar size to the 20 to 60 and the 1.8 primes, that means that it also has a 67 millimeter front filter thread. And also the text on the front of the lens has been grayed out just like we saw with the 100 millimeter macro. And that is because this lens also has fantastic macro capabilities. In fact, the minimum focus distance for this lens at 28 millimeters is quoted as 0.14 meters on the body of the lens, but that's the distance between the sensor to your subject. And realistically, I wanted to know what it was from the end of the lens to the subject that I was trying to focus on. And that distance is actually three centimeters. So that means you can get the front of this lens three centimeters away from your subject and still achieve focus, which is absolutely insane for a super zoom like this. And then I also wanted to know what the minimum focus distance was at 200 millimeters as well. So I tested that and it is actually 49 centimeters or 0.49 meters away from the front of the lens to your subject, uh, depending on what metric you like to use. So as I mentioned at the start of this video, this lens goes from F4 to F7.1. And I know that you guys are gonna be a little bit upset about the fact that it's a variable aperture zoom, but let's be honest, this zoom range in this size, it can damn well be variable aperture if it wants to. And honestly, the variable aperture-ness of this lens really didn't hold me back nearly as much as I thought it would. So please don't let that be the discerning factor for you as to whether this lens is worthwhile. One of the great things about this lens is that it does also have optical image stabilization. So when you pair that with the IBIS seen inside the Lumix S52, S52X, whatever Lumix body you're using, it means you're gonna get rock steady stabilization for both still shooting and for video shooting at 200 millimeters. It also means that if you are in a pinch and need a little bit more light, that you can actually go ahead and put that shutter speed all the way down and still get really great images when you are shooting handheld. And the same can be said for when shooting video as well, because of course we have the dual native ISO. So you can just shoot at ISO 4000, and then when you're at 200 millimeters, the F7.1 really won't affect you in terms of the amount of light intake you're getting. Now let's talk a little bit more about the physical characteristics of this lens. So there are two switches on the side of this lens, your AF MF switch and your optical image stabilization switch. And that is just on and off. Um, and then in terms of the zoom, you know, how much it protrudes when it does zoom all the way in, the lens becomes, I'd say maybe just a little bit less than twice its length when it is fully zoomed out. And realistically, the center of gravity and the weight distribution of this lens is very, very well thought out. So it doesn't feel uncomfortable or front heavy when you are completely zoomed all the way out at 200 millimeters. So I know what you're thinking, what's the catch? Where is the big bugaboo with this lens? And honestly, there isn't one. This lens is sharp all the way through its focal range from 28 millimeters to 200 millimeters. And honestly, I have not had this much fun with a single lens in a very long time. And that's simply because I could just leave the house with my S52 and the 28 200 and know that I could shoot pretty much anything from, you know, nice wides, 
establishing shots, um, also to the details and stuff. So it was really, really fun to use. It's just second to none. I genuinely think Lumix have smashed it out of the park with this one. Um, and honestly, we need to think about who this lens has been targeted towards, what the purpose of this lens is, and that's ultimately to have an extremely lightweight travel setup, which covers pretty much every single basis. And that's exactly what this lens delivers. So if I am gonna be doing any traveling anytime soon, and I don't wanna bring a bunch of stuff with me, let's say for example, I'm going on a holiday with my family, or just gonna do something just for me, then the 20 200 is definitely gonna be the lens that I'm bringing over any other lens in the Lumix lineup. Because ultimately, the camera that you have with you is the best one, and if it's lighter and easy to bring with you, then it will be the one that you're using. It's also worth mentioning that at 200 millimeters, f7.1 won't actually feel like everything's in focus because of course we are working with that compression as well. And if you do get closer to your subject, then of course it will throw the background out even more. So realistically, I wasn't finding myself pining for more bokeh with this lens. Um, and speaking of bokeh, the nice little orbs you get are very, very round and circular without much of that, you know, onion ring or whatever they call it. Um, it looks really pleasing. And for those who are interested in knowing what max aperture can be achieved at each focal length that may be used. I've made a table and I'll put that up on the screen now for you guys so you can see exactly what the aperture is doing as you go up the focal length range all the way from 28 millimeters to 200 millimeters. So would I recommend the 28 200? I mean is the Pope a Catholic? Of course I recommend this lens. There's literally nothing that I dislike about using this thing and it has been an absolute joy to test out over the last couple of weeks. Um, honestly I'd say that if you are in the market for a zoom lens or just generally a lens that does it all then this should definitely be on the list because for a thousand pounds or less I can't really see anything else that compares.